Throughout Doctor Who's history, we've seen some fantastic technology. Whether it be the trusty sonic screwdriver or the Doctor's TARDIS, it's all super alien. However, one bit of tech that helped save everyone was of human design, to a degree. Today, we're talking about the Subwave Network. While originally introduced in the 2008 episode, The Stolen Earth, the Subwave Network has recently been reborn by the BBC as an Instagram broadcast channel, and their way to promote Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. Therefore, some new viewers may not be aware of the story behind this technology. In today's Doctor Who Explained episode, we dive into the Subwave Network. Roll the intro. Greetings everyone, I'm Jack and welcome to TARDIS Central. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at TARDIS Central. Quick, what Doctor Who topic should we discuss next here on the channel? Comment down below. Maybe the laser screwdriver. Okay, let's go. Designed as a piece of sentient software, the Subwave Network was programmed to find anyone who could help contact the 10th Doctor. To do this, it made use of Subwave communications to transmit. Therefore, it meant it was undetectable as it was below normal waves. The technology was pivotal in saving humanity during the Daleks' invasion of Earth in 2008, and how they stole the planet Earth and 26 other planets. But how did this technology come to be? Before the technology could be used in contacting the 10th Doctor in 2008, it had to be designed. The Mr. Copper Foundation created it. This foundation funded many advanced scientific subjects for humanity. However, the origins of this foundation remained a mystery to many, but it did have a direct link to the 10th Doctor. So it does make sense that one bit of technology was created to contact the Doctor in times of emergency specifically. The mysterious Mr. Copper was actually a former employee of the Titanic, yes, the space one. He was left on Earth in 2007 by the 10th Doctor after being one of the survivors of the spaceship's accident. The 10th Doctor left him with a prepaid credit card. Using his wealth, Mr. Copper would create the foundation in his name and begin to fund many advanced scientific subjects. It's just uh, petty cash, spending money. Uh, uh, it's all done by computer. I, I didn't really know the currency, so I thought a million might come. Mr. Copper, a million pounds is worth 50 million credits. How much? 50 million and 56. Oh, oh. oh my goodness me, I... Yeah! It's all yours, planet Earth. Now, that's a retirement plan, but just you be careful, though. Great Britain's former Prime Minister. Harriet Jones, former Prime Minister yes, we know who she is, also helped further development of the subwave network. In 2008, when the Daleks transport Earth to the Medusa Cascade, humanity fought off a Dalek invasion. The world's armies were quickly depleted and overwhelmed as millions of Daleks swarmed cities, countries and continents, shouting the famous Exterminate! The Doctor's companions, including Dr. Martha Jones at Unit's New York base, Captain Jack at Tortured Free, and Sarah Jane Smith at 13 Bannerman Road all scrambled to find a way to get out of the current situation. The Daleks even attacked the Valiant, which was still under the command of Unit at this point in time. Under the command of the United Nations, Earth officially declares a surrender, fearing the planet and humanity lost to the Dalek invasion. At this point, it very much is. As this happens, the Doctor's former companions listen in, the subwave network begins its purpose. Former Prime Minister Harriet Jones uses the subwave network to contact the Doctor's former companions via their own devices. Harriet Jones contacts Captain Jack at Tortured Free, Sarah Jane Smith and Martha Jones, and connects to a noble family computer, although they cannot talk back due to webcams. It's me! It's me! You can't hear me. Have you got a webcam? No, she wouldn't let me. She said they're naughty. I can't speak to her then, can I? As such, Rose Tyler, who has dropped in from her world, can't communicate with the other companions. She's forced to watch alongside Sylvia and Wilf. Harriet Jones directs the companions to use the subwave network to contact the Doctor. While the companions talk to each other during the crisis, this is also Rose's first introduction to Martha Jones. Harriet explains that they're all able to communicate through the subwave network. She explains how this technology was obtained from the Mr. Copper Foundation. Doctor Who fans will know this as a reference to Mr. Copper from Voyage of the Damned, as we explained earlier. Now it's a fantastic bit of storytelling that binds the recent stories of modern Doctor Who together at this point in time. The companions come together to contact the Doctor. Captain Jack proposes they can transmit to the Doctor using the power of the Rift in Cardiff at Tortured Free. 
Luke, Sarah Jane's adopted son, informs them that Mr. Smith, the supercomputer, can tap into the global telecommunications network, therefore forcing every phone across Earth to call the same number simultaneously. However, there is one issue. Transmitting the signal will reveal the subwave network to the Daleks. Ianto Jones informs Jack of this, and Harriet Jones understands that the signal will be traced back to her home. She does state that her life no longer matters, not if it saves Earth. When transmitting begins, everyone calls the doctor's number. This is the phone that Martha gave to him. Even Rose and the noble family call the doctor. The subwave network begins transmitting. Suddenly, the darts realize the children of time are working against them and try to put a stop to it. Gwen of Torchwood warns Harriet that the darts have found her. Just before they arrive in her home, Harriet gives control of the network to Torchwood Free, so the doctor can still be contacted. The Daleks burst into a home and give us a great scene. Tell the doctor from me. He chose his companions well. Harriet Jones, former Prime Minister. Yes, we know who you are. Exterminate! Porter Free maintains a subwave network signal. It does finally reach the Doctor and Donna Noble, who are aboard the TARDIS and searching for Earth. Now aware of what is happening, the Doctor locks onto the signal from the communications network and has the TARDIS follow it through time. He becomes aware that the Daleks' plan had to make the 27 planets, which includes planet Earth, one second out of sync with the universe. It's a perfect hiding place for their evil plans. The Doctor arrives in this area and connects to the subwave network. Saying hello to his former companions, he introduces Donna to them all. The next set of events kicks off massively for the Doctor and the Daleks, as they go head to head in the conclusion of the 10th Doctor's recent adventures with the episode Journey's End. It also marks the introduction of a Meta Crisis Doctor and the departure of Donna Noble as a companion. Ultimately, the subwave network fulfilled its design purpose. It was able to be used for two things in the end. First, to contact those who had dealings with the Doctor in recent years, and second, to contact the Doctor himself. Ultimately, the design and the operation of the network allowed for Earth's survival and the defeat of the Daleks in the end. If it was not for Mr. Copper's hard work and Harriet Jones' sacrifice, then Earth and the whole of reality might have been lost to Davros' new Dalek Empire. With the approach of a Doctor Who 60th Anniversary special episodes, the BBC have once again made use of a subwave network name. An Instagram broadcast channel allowed the BBC's social team to share posts directly with fans. Essentially, the account can message everyone who follows it, and who has access to the account. Rather impressive. When you think about it, it's rather fitting, given the subwave network was designed to find those who had connections to the Doctor. In recent weeks, the subwave network has been taken over by Who Spy. This behind-the-scenes campaign teases fans with shots from the set of Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials. Look, we're not complaining, this is very fun. So, that is the subwave network in Doctor Who. What should we dive into and explain next in the Doctor Who universe? Let us know in the comments section below. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from a team here at TARDIS Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. That's it from TARDIS Central, I've been Jack, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time!